94% of elected offices are with the tribunal as INEX credibility sinks. An environmental disaster of plastic pollution in Lagos State. Those are two of the things we'll be discussing this morning. And of course, there will be off the press where we try to x-ray the headlines that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Liam Gould. Agaji. It's a wonderful Thursday morning, Entrepreneurial Thursday, and we're hoping that whatever business you're doing, you have insight into what will make you even prosper more. No matter how difficult the times might be, you know there's always a way out. Well, as we welcome you here uh, this morning, we want to just look at some of the things that uh, uh, pricked our interest as it is. Uh, the Pope has urged efforts to avoid humanitarian uh, catastrophe in Gaza. He made this call on Wednesday uh, for the efforts to be made to avoid a humanitarian catastrophe and express concern at risk of a widening of the Hamas-Israel conflict. While he did not explicitly mention the blast that tore through a hospital in Gaza late Tuesday killing hundreds of people, the 86-year-old head of the Worldwide Catholic Church spoke at the end of his weekly audience of his worry at the possible widening of the conflict, particularly while there are so many fronts already open across the world. The Pope asked for all sides in the conflict to let their weapons be silent and to let the cry of peace uh, be heard. He expressed his belief that war does not resolve any problems, but rather spreads death and destruction while increasing hatred and multiple uh, revenge. According to him, war erases the future. Now, speaking in front of thousands of people in St. Peter's Square, he urged believers to only take the side of peace and called for a day of prayer, fasting, and penance on October 27, including a gathering in the evening at St. Peter's Square. He invited members of different Christian denominations and other religions to join in. Also, the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Idowu Iwohua, has ordered the removal of the Divisional Police Officer of the Meron Police Station in Lagos State over alleged extortion. An engineer named Ibrahim Saliu had earlier claimed some policemen attached to the Meron Police Station in Lagos State extorted 200,000 naira from him on Saturday. According to Saliu, the officers alongside the station's DPO threatened him and his brother with jail time should they fail to provide receipts for the phones uh, seen with Saliu's brother. He said, and I quote, the DPO took the iPhones, removed the warranty stickers, and declared that my brother and I are thieves and armed robbers, end of quote. In his allegation, Saliu claimed that the DPO gave his officers an order to detain him and his brother for stealing and armed robbery. He also disclosed that he was asked to make a 500,000 naira payment to secure the freedom and after agreeing to 200,000 naira paid in cash per the officer's order. In a tweet confirming the incident on Wednesday, the State Police Public Relations Officer Benjamin Hundain disclosed that the CP Lagos had ordered the immediate removal of the Meron Police Station DPO for leadership dereliction and supervisory ineptitude. The tweet also revealed that all the officers involved had been identified and were currently at the command headquarters where their orderly room trial had commenced. In so many uh, instances, we berate the police force, the army, whatever other security agencies that we can find doing something that we do not like. But when they do something that we do like, we should applaud them as well. This is a good lesson, I hope, and we all hope, uh, that all other people will borrow a leaf from, all the other officers that extort uh, the citizen will uh, borrow a leaf from here and uh, be in line. It is to keep the peace that they were employed to do. It is to keep our territorial integrity that the army was employed to do. And so many other things that the security agencies were employed to do should be the things they should be doing instead of extorting people. Now, there's a common understanding that if you're carrying a million naira, for instance, and you run into a police station and say, I want to be safe, I'm carrying a million naira, you never know what will happen. 
maybe nothing will happen to you and you will be safe, but the image is really bad. And if things like this happen more often, where erring police officers are brought to justice, then people will start to uh, have confidence in the police force again. So we applaud uh, the CP for doing what he has done. We do hope that the removal of the Meron uh, police DPO is not just to remove him to another station, but he will be punished accordingly, and every other person who is an accomplice will be punished, and we get to know uh, how the punishment went and how much he's serving, if it is jail term and everything, not just an orderly room trial, and after that they're transferred, maybe up not, where we don't get to see them again. The next uh, story that uh, we were interested in is the fact that the Senate has confirmed the nomination of Olukoyede and uh, Hama Joda as EFCC chairman and secretary. The Senate confirmed the nomination of uh, Olukoyede and Mohamed Hamajoda as the Chairman and Secretary of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, uh, respectively. Also confirmed along with the duo was Halima Shehu as the Chief Executive Officer of the National Social Investment Program Agency, NSIPA. Olukoyede was named Acting Chairman of the EFCC months after Abdul Rashid Bawa, former boss of the Anti-Graft Agency, was suspended by the President. During the screening and confirmation, Ulukoyede highlighted that several of Nigeria's institutions and systems had been overwhelmed by financial crisis and committed to putting a stop to it without fear or favor and in accordance with the law. He added that he would pro prioritize prevention over enforcement. Uh, we wish him well, Ulukoyede, uh, for the past few uh, administrations as it is, we've seen that EFCC is... Um, being the chair of EFCC is like sitting on a hot seat. You never know what will happen tomorrow. We have the case of Magu, we have the case of Bawa, we have so many other cases of people who superintend over EFCC being disgraced out of office. And not only EFCC, uh, every promising, <laughs> I don't know, Every, every institution where we see people that are very promising and getting results, sometimes we see these same people being disgraced out of office. We will never know what these people do to get the results that they get, but when we see in public, um, in public space that they did X, Y, Z, that was not really lawful, uh, we begin to wonder what uh, happened. We remember the case of Keari, uh, we don't know what uh, is, has become of him right now. He used to be called a super cop. At one point, he had a standing ovation at the National Assembly because he was catching the criminals. Now, he was also branded the criminal. Maybe he did all the things that he did. Maybe he didn't do. We do not know. But for as long as you are on your seat, let history judge you kindly by what you do. And we do hope that uh, Olukoye Day will serve his term, do what he needs to do for the benefit of Nigeria and Nigerians, and then retire or leave the position in peace and without any rancor. Okay, we are going to take a short break. After a while, we'll return with Mr. or Architect Ezekiel Nyaitok as our guest on Off the Press. For now, just stay tight. It's a Thursday morning, and we wish you well this morning. <music> 